I'm Alex, my Korean name is Dong Do Jung, and, and I'm Steve, my Korean name is Tong Se Hyun. We're both a uh, class of 14, JCL major, and I graduated last year. And Steve. And I'm graduating hopefully this semester. <laughs> hopefully, it's tentative. So he's currently in his final semester. Yeah. And we're basically here to tell you that JCL is the best major. <laughs> Uh, because it really does tail uh, allow you to tailor the curriculum to your own needs, um, whatever the kind of a person you are. So I think Steve and I are a very good combination of people to really exemplify this because we are so different. Yeah, there are a lot of options about, but people just don't realize it before uh, signing up, or before actually declaring, declaring their majors. So they don't realize that you know JCL is so much more than it, uh, it is shown. I guess it is. Visualize. Mm -hmm. So yeah, right. we'll go ahead with the first. So we'll try to show how JCL has worked for both of us, um, and we'll also try to provide some tips on how to make some good decisions whilst you're in college. And um, I will uh, start talking first, and then Steve will come next. So before I start to talk about myself, that is the first question that I wanted to ask you: Why are you in college, right? Um, it's not a question that you have to have an immediate, immediate answer to right now, but it's something that you need to bear in mind in order to make the right decisions whilst you're at college. Um, so if your answer to that question is you want to maximize your chances of getting into Samsung or LG, then I suggest that you change your major to engineering or medicine, like that shows, right? The <coughs> statistics provided by the Ministry of Education regarding employment rates in Korea. Um, and this was also, I actually read this news uh, this morning, so there's a new major being created in Korea, um, in, in Yonsei as well, it's something to do with uh, semiconductor stuff, and yeah, just it guarantees you a job in Samsung, so go for it. Um, <laughs> but clearly, uh, most of you guys are not here uh, for that reason, um, and you're actually here because you're interested in the JCL curriculum, and you want to know uh, how limited or how unlimited your choices, uh, your career options will be if you major in JCL. So uh, we have brought you a list of, um, it's, it's not a formal list, it's, it's an informal list. I've called my you know, classmates to find out where they are right now. It's not a full list either, but uh, as of now, we have some people, um, oh, so I divided the classmates into like two large groups. So the first group I would call the academic group. So they chose their uh, career paths based upon the JCL classes uh, and uh, the subject areas that they were interested in. So they decided to pursue an academic career path. Um, so uh, some people were studying um, in SNU so National um, for International Studies. Uh, a classmate is in China studying Chinese politics. I am studying political thoughts in the Yonsei department. Um, and a lot of us are preparing for the REIT and LSAT exams for law schools, both in Korea and um, in the US. And the other group is the non-academic group, uh, which involves Steve, um, <laughs> who's doing some kind of hedge fund stuff that I don't understand, but he will explain later. Um, there's a classmate who's a journalist right now, um, someone working in the marketing division of a company, and someone who's working as a paralegal in a US law firm uh, situated in Korea. So, you can do anything, basically, with a JCL major if you prepare um, in the right way. Um, and now I'm just going to briefly talk about myself. Um, I don't know how interesting this will be, but so after graduation, I graduated last year, and um, I went straight into the politics department at Yonsei because I came across this program called um, uh, which is offered to everyone in Yonsei, um, and it's free. So you have you get full scholarship for three semesters to complete your master's degree in Yonsei, um, straight out of your undergraduate program. And uh, at that time, so you have to apply either in your uh, either in your junior year or your sophomore year. Um, and at, at that time, I was very interested in political thoughts. Um, with hindsight, not because I was inherently committed to that field um, academically, but it was more like, um, I, I really liked building my own arguments and having to use you know, logical and analytical thinking. That is what I liked about political thoughts, not the field per se. And I realized this as soon as my first semester began um, at grad school. Uh, I looked at my uh, sambes who were uh, finishing their master's courses, uh, going into PhDs, and I realized that that is not 
where I want to be <laughs> in five, ten years um, uh, after after grad school. Um, so uh, because because it felt a bit stagnant for me, because I'm much more of a you know, outgoing uh, people person, and I need to be pressured. I need you know. Uh, pressured deadlines um, to really thrive, to perform as well as I can, um, and I need competition. And I realized that grad school wouldn't provide that kind of uh, environment suited to my own personality. And that is why I decided to take a leave. Um, and I kind of, at this point in my life, I was very burnt out um, of studying, uh, of you know, studying especially uh, political thoughts. Um, so I needed something else. I, I wanted to give law a serious thought. And that is why I joined um, the Underworld Law Society, as mentioned by uh, Professor Phillips earlier. Um, and when I joined, it uh, was mainly a group was studying public international law, but it has broadened its subjects right now. And in the semester that I joined, actually, we got an offer from a student club in the Yonsei Law School um, to join their team to compete in the Willem um, this arbitration route. Uh, for those of you who don't know what arbitration is, it's just think of it as a big international moot court competition. Um, so we joined their team and we performed very, very well. We won the Seoul pre moot uh, and we were supported by the law school to go to Hong Kong and participate in the main competition. Hundreds of schools come from all over the world, including like the law schools that you've heard of, right? Harvard, <laughs> Stanford, <laughs> whatever, right? Or, like, it's, it's a very big competition, everyone knows about it. And we got coachings from uh, actual practicing lawyers at the big law firms like Kim and John, Taekyongyang, Yu Chuan, uh, Pang Zhang, right? Um, so we got to interact with, well, I got to interact with uh, law school students and practicing lawyers, which really allowed me to assess um, what it was like to be um, a, at least a law school student, if not a practitioner in the, in the field of law. Um, and I realized that I really did want to seriously commit myself to this field. So I looked for an internship that was uh, related to the field and I realized that there was this place called the Korean Commercial um, Arbitration Board, KCAB, uh, which is the only arbitral institution that is supported by the Korean government right now, the Ministry of uh, Justice. And um, I was kind of very uh, bold about uh, the way that I found this internship. I just called them up and I said, Are you, do you have any internship positions? Do you happen to uh, be recruiting any interns? Um, and they gave me this email address and they were like, oh, just like email this person if you have any uh, questions. So I didn't timidly ask them. Uh, I, I wasn't just like, oh, do you have any internship positions? I just attached my resumes, both in Korean and English. And I said, look, I'm this kind of a person and I'm interested in arbitration. Do you have an internship position by any chance? And luckily, um, they were looking for interns, but they hadn't put up the job posting yet. But they were very positive and they gave me the application form in advance before even they put up the job posting. So I was able to apply very quickly and get the position. And right now, so I'm intern I've been interning there since January and I'll be taking the LSAT in June and maybe I'll have to retake it in the fall, <laughs> who knows. But yeah, so that's where I am right now. I, uh, it looks like I've I'm, I'm not really anywhere right now in terms of my career since I'm not even in law school yet, but I am busy and I am preparing and this is what life after graduation actually tends to look like, right? Um, so when I was a freshman, I thought, okay, four years of college and I'll, you know, have a house and I'll be settled down with work, right? No, it, it just really doesn't work like that. Um, for some people it does, but for people like me, um, I suffer from indecisiveness. For those of you who know uh, Professor Kang, um, he used to be the chair of JCL whilst I was uh, in the major. He always used to tease me for being so indecisive. Um, but anyway, so I, I know how hard decision making can get and that's why I just wanted to give you some tips on making decisions in college. Uh, so firstly, you have to know yourself. You have to know what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, and what you like and what you don't like. And the, uh, doing that, like trying to find that out, is a big part of college life. And it's, it's not easy. Again, it's easier for some people, but it's, it definitely wasn't easy for me. Uh, but that is why JCL is so great because it makes you take different types of classes and requires to uh, requires you to use different skill sets, and that makes you find out, you know, what you're good at and what you're not good at, and what you like and what you don't like. Right. So that is, I would say, the most important thing that you have to get out of college. 
Um, and, uh, and, and doing that, you know, also talk to your professors and your upperclassmen and your peers. Don't really, I know that it's very tempting to go on those um, every time app, do you still use that? The timetable, you guys all know that app, right? But those anonymous comments, a lot of that is BS. I'm sorry for my language, but it's, it's just don't listen to that. Um, talk, like, actually talk to people who are going to be responsible for the comments they make, okay? Um, so as, as tempting as it is, don't be too um, involved in that anonymous uh, you know, board things. Um, and also plan ahead, right? Go on Korea Yonsei, uh, go on the UNC website. It also has a, a section for job postings. Um, always look for opportunities. There are so many opportunities uh, for a college student. Right? Um, so I, I tell this to some people uh, that I want to show off to. <laughs> so I, um, during college, I went to, like I recently went to Hong Kong and I also went on a research trip to Iceland and I went to Belgium and the UK. None of that um, I paid for. I always was either supported by the university or um, the Ministry of Education. So, you know, there are so many opportunities out there for you, but nobody is going to spoon feed them to you, okay? You have to look for them. You have to keep your eyes out, <coughs> open, sorry. Um, so, always plan ahead, but also don't only look for short-term opportunities. Also look at job postings. I know like a lot of you are still in your freshman year, but look at job postings um, and see what jobs actually interest you and what it actually means to uh, be in that position and then what qualifications are necessary for you to get there, right? For some of them might require specific majors, right? In that case, go to that major. Um, but uh, you'll find that a lot of them don't actually require specific majors, um, but it depends on which uh, job you're looking for. But anyway, that would be um, my little piece of advice. And what was the last slide? Oh yeah, so <laughs> GPA, uh, there's this strange conception uh, in Korea, uh, play hard in your freshman year, GPA doesn't matter. I don't know where that comes from. Um, the higher your, the, the GPA is, the better. Focus on your classes and get the most out of them, right? I'm not saying like stress about GPAs, you need a 4.0 GPA to get anywhere. That, that is not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that in order to get the most out of your classes, you're paying, what, so much money for them, right? Um, like, really focus. Try to do your best. Try to gain the most out of them. And the GPA will naturally follow, okay? Um, and exams. You don't have to worry about them right now if you're a freshman. You'll probably be thinking about them in your junior, senior year. Um, so the uh, GRE exam is for the uh, graduate schools abroad, LSAT is for law schools, uh, PSAT, that's for Hindong Moshi and Weibo Moshi, uh, and the personality aptitude test for like uh, companies, Pegyok, Injokseong, language tests, like if your job requires Chinese, you have to prepare for that. So um, uh, the reason why I mention these is because you uh, need to kind of think ahead and plan, plan ahead um, and uh, again, you have to know that after four years, um, you might not be where you want to be, right? Um, you might be still preparing for these exams. And that's why I say focus, but be patient. Because you will eventually get there. You'll eventually achieve what you want to achieve. It's just some hard work that is, uh, that is uh, something that you have to take uh, initiative for, other than um, your school GPA. So yeah, I guess that's the end of my rant. <laughs> And I'll pass the presentation on to Steve. Thank you. So, I guess she kind of talked about everything that I wanted to say. <laughs> <laughs> even even things that I, I guess weren't on the presentation, but they're very helpful. And I, and I hope you guys pay attention to what she said, especially about being proactive and kind of, you know, there's, as you mentioned earlier, I'm just going to go briefly over it. As, you men as she mentioned earlier, how you know, no one's gonna spoon feed you. And I was ready to be spoon fed. Like my freshman, sophomore year, I, I, I like that quote about how you know, play hard in your freshman, play that freshman year, and you know, after that, study hard. Because I, what I did was I, I studied hard up till my sophomore year. Then I kind of gave up about 
tell you, <laughs> I'll tell you, but GP is important and, and you know, there's, I guess, as a student, uh, we have to have, we have to have this, we have to pay at least a minimal attention to our grades in our classes just because, you know, that's, that's what we are, it's our job, it's our status as students, but anyways. I will tell you briefly about how I got into investment, kind of background information on you know where I am right now and what, what kind of journey I took to get here. Um, I so my freshman year, upon entering Yonsei, the only thing that I was focusing on <coughs> were three things: GPA, American Football Eagles. By the way, it's um it's a Mishuku team in Yonsei, and uh, Leet, which. I didn't really think about much. I, I mean, it's a mistake that I've made in the past. Just because I have entered into a pre-law pre -law program, uh, JCL, I didn't really think about other options. But you know, granted that we're in a disciplinary, uh, we're in a disciplinary, interdisciplinary major, and we're studying about all these things that are integrated and can be, I guess, applicable to you know all kinds of situations, all kinds of social problems and, you know, objectives, initiatives. Uh, granted that, I didn't really focus too much about other things, or I didn't focus, I didn't pay attention to uh, other details in life, what I was interested in, etc. But I am, right now, doing what I like, so I guess I, the journey was worth it. And Tokyo, I wrote down teaching assistant because that's what I did uh, after my sophomore year, after I was done studying, I feel like, after I was done with the school and I was so stressed. Uh, after my sophomore year, before beginning my junior year, I wanted to do something different. And uh, the difference came very small because I needed pocket allowance, I needed pocket money to survive in Songdo. So I signed up for the UICTA, and then I got to this uh, amazing initiative, amazing program called Yonsei Center for Social Innovation, which is no, no longer here. But uh, back then, when it was there, they had a bunch of programs, activities that you know students could sign up for free and you know go to places, uh, do things that are actually. I'm, I'm, it's still available now uh, as part of the career tours in UIC office, but I that's that's when I first became kind of active in what I wanted to do and finding out you know what my interests are, and from that I s quit thinking about law school. Okay, so my starting my junior year, before that I was only thinking about going to law school, so I didn't even go to the army. I'm sure there are a couple of guys here who had need to go to the army. Do you? No? Okay, I'm sorry. But <laughs> I didn't even sign up for the army because I was confident. I was confident that I won't go to the army. That I would instead go to law school and be a kunin pomuga, which is amazing. Which is which is an alternative that I could take as a changyo. So you know, but no. I, I didn't even, it's one of the things that you know, guys have to take care of upon entering uh, college. It's the first thing I, I guess they should take care of, but I didn't. So that's how focused I was on trying to go to law school. But I broke that and I started doing all these things that because I was, uh, was not paying attention since my freshman year, I started doing all these things that I should really shouldn't have because because I, I thought that I was lacking a lot of experience, that I was really, um, you know, spilling my undergraduate years away. So I decided to suddenly establish a startup. And it was, it didn't work out, <laughs> hence I am currently doing investing, but it was an education platform to reach out to middle high schoolers to try to to try to get them to be more, I guess, sub substantively more academic. So we would go out and we would, we would publish books and then give it up to students. And then we would have lectures. Uh, we would go to like Chung, Chungcheongdo, 
could go to Pyeongsangdo, all these schools that are that were lacking in that uh, in that lacking in that academic environment, we reached out to them, and it was like an outreach, like a social education platform, but it didn't work out. So what's the what's the next thing that I uh, I guess I turned to it was consulting because I realized all these things that I'm trying to do I I am trying to satisfy myself to find out what my interests are and a couple of my interests were firstly counseling uh, besides law school counseling and second was um, it was cooking but I I talked to my parents about I talked to my parents about it for like a week, I argued with them, and I, uh, I got out of the house, cut through, <laughs> to, to achieve it, but uh, they wouldn't allow it. So, <laughs> what a shame. But anyways, another alternative I said, as I mentioned earlier, was uh, counseling. But it was a different concept from consulting. What I, the projected image of me doing consulting was going up to corporates, uh, imagine, visualize yourselves as, you know, corporate heads, and I'll be like, you know, present like this, and being like, oh, oh the uh, company efficiency uh, increased by like, 20%, you know, your production line. I, that, that's what I was imagining, but what I was instead doing when I signed up to, uh, signed up to work as an RA at a consulting firm was, you know, doing all my Excel stuff and really not doing anything much I guess, and even the cons consultants there were kind of, they were always, they were the most miserable people you could find. And I'm not <laughs> condoning, <laughs> you know, not, I'm not condoning uh, the, the, the bad corporate environment of working as a consultant, but I, so I worked as, I signed up and worked as a, at a AT Kearney through Career Yonsei, by the way. Career Yonsei is a fantastic um, uh, platform that you guys can utilize. Uh, to get to places, and after that, I, um, with the consultant that I was work working with at AT Kearney at the project, he moved to BCG and kind of he, he took me with him onto the next project. And consulting was not for me. I mean, I I required ten hours of sleep, but they gave me four every day. <laughs> so, um, and then Mongolia suddenly. <laughs> <coughs> I'm talking too much, so I'm trying to, I'll be as brief as possible. Good. So I worked, I was, before I was, I signed up for the consulting, I was actually working as a day trader uh, to begin with. So I, I worked at, I worked at Incheon, which uh, at this um, headquarters called R&H uh, Stock Trading Center. It's a small private company, investment company. Um, and it was, the head was someone that I uh, knew before, and he, he, we were kind of in the trading room. Uh, he was personally teaching me stuff, and, but I realized that kind of environment was not for me as well, so I got out of the office, and here I am. Uh, my, our team is actually not, uh, it's not, it's not established yet. It's, it will be. It's in the process, but it's called JDJ Investment, investment, and it's JDJ is um, uh, initials for last names, by the way. There are three partners, including me. And we want to, you know, um, base ourselves in Korea, but work uh, with investors and work with, work with people in Mongolia because <coughs> they don't have uh, a developed market yet. But anyways, that's, I guess, um, my work right now. I am currently trading as an, I'm currently trading in futures, forex, stocks, uh, stocks in Korea, US, Hong Kong, Japan. I, I came here, I was, I got here because Japan is golden week, Hong Kong is off right now, and US is, they're, uh, they're, their indices is not, their indices are good, but I guess their market is not so good right now. So I kind of took a leave today because the market told me to. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't register with me either. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you know, do anyone know what that is? B. 
<laughs> I have another example, but I won't use it. Um, so derive and perceive, what does that mean? I feel like everything that we learn or any kind of experience that we get from our undergraduate career, it's necessary for us to build upon. What that means is, you know, whatever little thing, whatever kind of small experiences you guys have, and whatever you learn in class, it's kind of, granted you guys don't remember the class material as I don't, granted that, we, we have to do something to derive upon what we learn and derive upon our undergraduate career, and that's what I did. My undergraduate career led to um, trading in Bitcoin. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> I actually traded Bitcoin when it became hot. Yeah, that's what everyone says, right? So 2012, that's my uh, first investment that I made ever. And that's when Bitcoin was $40 per coin. And I held that until 2017 when it got to, uh, it was, its peak was 2,400, uh, yeah, two, two, 2,400 USD. So it was like 240 <laughs> mana. Yeah. <laughs> Did you it. sell it? I sold it then <laughs> <laughs> for for my UIC. What do you call it? Tuition. <laughs> tuition. <laughs> for my tuition, <laughs> I could have had. I could have had. How instead of <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> uh, what I why I'm referring to Bitcoin? It's because um, it's because I realized when I got to my junior year, senior year in college, what my interests are, and I really hope you guys take the opportunity right now in whatever major courses that you're taking. To, I mean, it doesn't even have to come to uh, come from class, but I'm I'm advising that you guys do derive something from class. But you know, find out what you guys like. I mean, I'm not condoning you know anti-law, but because I, I took that kind of path from. Uh, but I'm I'm even right now I'm leaving the options open as well to go back to law school if I want to study law, and that's the kind of um, I guess stance I could stance that I advise you guys to take as well. Always, always have like a backup plan, but always know what you guys are doing and focus on what you guys are doing. So, real quick, <laughs> <laughs> this is the actual chart that I that I use, and this is back in 2016, uh, June 23rd. Does anyone know what this is? <laughs> this is this is when uh, Brexit happened, mm -hmm. and there's this really big blue candle. Well, well, I was gonna use it as an example to kind of show you guys what I I learned it during that during the class during uh, this one class in econ economics in one of our uh, JCL I, I think all the courses I asked the professor what it's like uh, how the situation is because I was interested in back then um, and she said it's you know euro will fall so I, I did invest in it when it actually fell. And you know, you can take anything from class and I guess practice it. Okay, lastly, focus but be elastic. The the point it's the same thing as you said, the both on the focus part, but I guess I'm going back to what I said before, uh, elasticity um, I guess is based upon uh, being able to uh, snap back when it is uh, redirected. So know what you guys are going to do. So focus on your, I guess, not only your career path, but I guess on your studies as well. But always have, always know that you can come back. I guess that's, the, what, that's what I want to say. Always know you guys come back, can come back to what you guys have been doing. So build upon it, I guess. And you know, that's, this is, this is what I want to uh, tell you guys the most, is to find out about your interests and strengths, and, yeah.